Yeah, I'm going to be doing weekly stardom and sit em fantasy football. Uh, this is for week three. I, I'm going to do th uh, four stardoms, three sit -ems, and two sleepers. Uh, for the quarterbacks, I got one. I got Kirk Cousins. Uh, he is coming back home to play the Detroit Lions. I know the Detroit Lions have had uh, pretty good defense this year. Not the best, but a lot better than what I've seen in the past. And but I just see Minnesota coming back home and rebounding. I think that uh, they're gonna want to come out hot, and you know they're one of those teams that are not very good on away games, and they crush it at home. So I expect a good game out of Kirk Cousins. Uh, another start of my guy is Tua Tua Tonga Viola. I think that he is going to be in a kind of a shootout with the Buffalo Bills. I know the Buffalo Bills have a good defense, but I think Josh Allen is going to be ahead fast, and I think Tua is going to have to be forced to throw downfield just like he was in that fourth quarter of the Ravens game. And I'm not saying they're going to win, but I I think he's going to put up some pretty good numbers. Might not be what it was last week, but I, I, I expect a big week out of Tua. Same thing for Josh Allen, though. Um Knowing that this game is probably going to be a shootout, I think I expect Allen to have a similar week to week one and week two. Um, nothing seems to be slowing him down. Uh, he'll be on my stardom's list until he pro proves me otherwise, unless he's playing the top defense in the league or something. Uh, Jalen Hurts. <clears throat> uh, playing the Commanders this week, uh, the Commanders have allowed a lot of points this year. And... Uh, I think this Monday night game gave him a lot of confidence. I think that's kind of what he needed. He needed a uh, little bit of affirmation knowing that he is the guy. And he he kind of had that moment when he threw that bomb first play, I believe, in the second. In the, it was either the last play in the second quarter or the first play in the third quarter. I can't remember. But um, he, I think, is going to be con continue this hot streak until they play a tougher opponent. Uh for my sleepers, I got Trevor Lawrence going to go, going up against the Chargers. Um, they put up 24 points on the Colts defense last week. Now the Colts defense doesn't look quite the same quite the same as they did last year, but uh, you gotta remember they got good linebackers. They got great corner, so I you know I don't think that's a slight at the Colts defense as much as it is a an. Uh, Jacksonville's offense being good. Uh, so I think this game could be a possible shootout as well. If Keenan Allen's out again, I think that Jacksonville will be in it. And I I, fully ex I wouldn't be surprised if Trevor Lawrence had a big game. My second sleeper, this is kind of a deep sleeper. I got uh, Jared Goff. Um, I think Minnesota's going to pull out ahead quick. And I think that's going to force them to throw a lot. Um, I know Minnesota's past D isn't the greatest, so I think they have some receivers. Like St. Brown's been looking really good. And, you know, I think that re that receiving core can break a couple balls off for Goff. So I think he might have a decent day too. Uh, for my sit I got uh, Russell Wilson. I have him in every one of my fantasy leagues. Um, been a huge disappointment. And... They're going up against San Francisco. Now I'm not saying they're going to lose or have a he's going to have a bad game, but I would not. If you have a better option at your backup, or that has a better, or at least a backup that has a better matchup, I would definitely go with that backup this week. I, I think that the Broncos are going to run a lot this week. If anything, if they move the ball at all, if Jerry Judy's out again, they're going to kind of look like a. You know, not a very very fast offense, so I ex expect him to ground and pound th this week. Um, second on my list, I got Aaron Rodgers. Um, going up against Tampa. Tampa's defense looks really good. Um, I think that Aaron Rodgers this year is going to have good games against defenses that are very poor. I think Aaron Rodgers will have efficient, but not a big numbers day against defenses that are relevant like Tampa's. Um, I think they're going to lean heavy on the run. And I, I just, I, I don't, I don't see Rogers having a huge day up against that defense at Tampa. Um, 
Third, I got Lamar Jackson. Now, I know he's coming off a career game, but they're coming good. They're going up against the Patriots at New England next week. And New England's defense made the Steelers' offense look like they were a college team last week. Uh, I think if you have a better option, again, if you have another option besides Lamar, Rodgers, or Wilson, if you have a backup, uh, that's going has like at least a decent matchup. I definitely would go with them over over these three guys this week. Uh, on to my running backs. I got for my three or four, sorry, uh, stardoms. I got Jonathan Taylor. Pretty obvious. He's all going up against the Chiefs. I am hoping that the Colts realized they are they need to run the ball. They tried to get fancy last week and just. They, but they avoided the run, and I know they have a new quarterback, and that's supposed to be a um, – he's supposed to be making the franchise a little more stable than Carson Wentz, but it hasn't looked like that so far. I, and I think if the coach has any sense, they're just going to lean heavy on that run um, because Matt Ryan's honestly starting to kind of play reckless. And not only is he playing reckless, he goes down on sacks where he's being he'll be he'll have a pass rush. He won't even negotiate in the pocket. He'll just go down. Um, Matt Ryan is not looking very good this year. So I think Jonathan Taylor is going to be carrying the rock. Uh, Naj, Najee Harris. Um, Pittsburgh going up against uh, Cleveland on Thursday. I think that. This game is going to be uh, a real, real ground and pound game, but I think one side is going to kind of get the better end of it. Uh, you'll see later in one of my other categories of what I said about Chubb, but back to Harris, I think that um, Cleveland's defense was kind of exposed last week a little bit against the Jets, and they, their Jets kind of got a decent running game going, so I think I fully expect them to just feed Harris all game. Um, for number three, I got DeAndre Swift. For uh, These are our, our stardoms. Uh, DeAndre Swift against the Vikings. Uh, I, I think this will be a good game. I think this will be close. Uh, so I know they, didn't put, they don't put Swift as much as I expected in the uh, red zone. So it's kind of been difficult for him to get a uh, get a touchdown, but he's been getting racking up the yards. And Minnesota's defense didn't look the greatest against the Eagles. Um, I just I, I think Swift might have Minnesota's fault at defense is their speed, and I think Swift is very quick. So I think he'll he'll be able to make some plays. Uh, and number four in the same game, I got Dalvin Cook. Um, just being that these are two teams with two weak defenses, I like a lot of these players in this game. Cook and Jefferson get the rock a lot, um, and I think I think Cook will have a good chance to get a touchdown and get rack up maybe even some receiving yards in this game because I I, I just I think that Minnesota is going to play with urgency this week, confident urgency because they'll be home. And it's early in the year, so not all hope. I don't think they have an all hope is lost kind of feeling, but I think they got a feeling like if we're serious, we need to move the rock and just we can't we can't make mistakes like we made on Monday. So I think they'll be efficient. Uh, sleepers, I got uh, Raheem Mostert uh, going up against <laughs> Raheem Mostert. Miami is going up against Buffalo. Um, I think that Moster is going to probably end up taking over most of the carries this year. He's looking really good in that offense. He looks really quick. He's got a lot of burst. He looks like he hasn't lost much speed since San Francisco. So um, I, I think he, he has a chance of, of, of breaking one off the, uh, this week. Um, and another sleeper I got is uh, James Robinson. Um he looked like he was getting the ball a lot more than I expected. I thought Travis Etienne was going to be the primary ball carrier, but Robinson's getting those those uh, very valuable catch uh, 
touches uh, on the goal line, and he's he's getting a lot of catches as well. It looks like they're splitting it 50-50, but they're both running the ball well. And honestly, James Robinson has been getting the better end of it. So I think he, he's a very good sleeper. Uh, this week for Sidham, got Christian McCaffrey, number one. Um, he is just an absolute shell of himself. Um, he's one of those running backs that just fell off after he got injured. It's sad. I loved Christian McCaffrey coming out, but... He looks toast. Um, and they're also going up against the Saints. Panthers are 0 2. People are panicking on that team. They're just they they they're not a dysfunctional franchise, but they look like they're playing dysfunctional. Um and I don't I I don't foresee McCaffrey getting much yardage on them. Uh, uh number two I got Austin Eckler. Uh last week he was he had very minimal touches. And when he did, he never really got a whole lot of yardage. This week, they're going up against Jacksonville, who shut out the Colts last week. Um, I know Jonathan Taylor didn't touch the ball a lot, but uh, for the most part, I mean, they were stuffing him. Jonathan Taylor got like two decent runs and for the beginning of the game where they, where they gave him the rock maybe six times in the first quarter or so or five, and he did not have a very good yard per carry. Um, and Eckler has been kind of struggling. I think his numbers are kind of on a decline right now. And number three, I got Melvin Gordon. Um, they're going against San Fran. I, I, I'm i not saying Javante Williams because of this. Javante has been getting 15 to 20 carries. Melvin Gordon's been getting 10 to 15. And Melvin Gordon gets yardage off of like Defenses, like stupid defenses, like he, he's ve he just is a very he he sees a hole and he'll take the, as much space as he can as even though even though he he doesn't have a whole lot of bursts anymore he sees holes really well, and San Fran has a good front seven and they're gonna be just they're they're gonna outsmart the running back they're not gonna be a a team that's just gonna let him let him run all over the place. Melvin Gordon makes banks off people's mistakes. I've noticed. I'm not, it's not a knock against this game. I just see him getting less carries than Javante. And I can, I can just see the 49ers with their great tackling and their great with Fred Warner. And they got, you know, Bosa back there. I, I think that, uh, they are going to stuff Gordon, but Javante, I, I think he's a top, three or four running back right now. So he has a chance to break one off at any time. All right. And then finally, I got wide receivers. Uh, for the four stardoms, I got Justin Jefferson. He's kind of an obvious one. Uh, even though he only had 40 yards last week, I think that was just be if If Minnesota all year, if they have a primetime game or a game that's like going to knock them in or out of the playoffs or like anything that's like super prime time or meaningful, don't take any of the Minnesota guys. Just don't. This game is at noon. They're playing Detroit. They're at home. Justin Jefferson is my number one starter. Number two, I got Tyreek. I think, like I had said in the pre uh, on the previous position, I said uh, that I think the Buffalo Miami game is going to be a shootout. Um, I think Buffalo is going to get ahead early. So therefore, when the Miami offense kind of got a flame lit under them last week was that first bomb to Tyreek Hill. I think that when push comes to shove, when things are forced, that's his. That's who he's going to go to. Um, I think that he's going to have a big game. Number three, I got an, a, an obvious one, Stephon Diggs. Uh, I, th I, uh, the, the, again, they're playing Miami. So I think that he is going to be in the main, the primary target, obviously for Josh Allen all game. I think he's kind of a given. And then Jalen Waddle. I have three receivers from the same game because Waddle and Hill had 160 plus yards, two touchdowns apiece last week. This game being a shootout. It's going to be Hill, Diggs, Waddle, Josh Allen, Tua. It's going to be them, that whole game. For my sit -ums, 
I got uh, Mike Williams. Um, with Keenan Allen being hurt, I think he's forced to be the number one target. And I think that Jacksonville has a good enough defense to just to shut him out. I, th I think the Chargers are going to have a, uh, have a rough day overall. Um, Mike Williams is not a true number one. So he's going to be put in a position. Now, obviously, he had a big week last week, but that was against a terrible Kansas City defense. So I think that Mike Williams is a uh, has sit him this week. Uh, Alan Lazard uh, going up against the Tampa Bay pass defense, which is really good. Um, he has been the only receiver that Aaron Rodgers at least trusts a little bit. So you know throughout the year i think he's a solid like wide receiver too wide receiver maybe like a, a flex but this week i i don't like him against tampa at all uh, i think they're going to lean heavy on the run and number 3 i got cd lamb uh monday night playing the giants if i'm not mistaken yes um the giants are 2 and 0 oh, and the bright spot of that whole team has been their run game and their defense and the Cowboys' only only weapon being Ceedee Lamb. I think Ceedee Lamb is gonna get like quadruple covered, triple covered. I think they're, I think they're gonna shut him out completely out of that game. I think it's prime time. I think the Giants are gonna want to like, it's at it's in New York. I think it's I think they're gonna force the Cowboys into a lot of mistakes that game. And on my uh, upset alert, I got Devonte Adams one. Um, had a bad game last game, but they're going to go up against Tennessee, who had a bad game on defense last week. But I think that the Bills just had a really good night. I don't think Tennessee's that bad. Um, I think Devontae won't have as bad his game as, like, one reception. But don't expect him to get over, like, 70 this week. I, 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 I think he's going to hit kind of right in between uh, what his first week was and what the second week was. And then also on upset alert, I got Nick Chubb at running back. Um, I think that the Pittsburgh run defense is probably the best run defense in the league. I, Chubb might get a touchdown, but he has been on fire, and I would not expect a monster game out of him. He might get you like 15, but I think that's like the cap. So that wraps up my stardom sit -em.